Okay, um, so my article, it's basically... Well, that was a quick one minute. <laughs> <laughs> Got three one words second. in. Nah, boring. <laughs> Next. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so basically what happened was Melody, my girlfriend studying law and she was talking about like lots of sort of, she's talking about like the laws and why they're the case and do we agree with them, etc. And there was one case which I thought was quite funny and I wanted to share it with you guys, right? Yes. But first, I want to ask you a question. If, this is a very open-ended question, so but remember law is mainly about principle than it is about anything else, like when you make a law, right? So yeah. if you try to launder money, right? You tried to take in a lot of money into a country illegally, but it turns out that wasn't money. Can you still be tried? Like, can what? you still be convicted? But what was yes. it if it wasn't well, money? It could just been paper. Wait. You thought it was money. This, this, so this someone goes gives you a briefcase. Like that. that lying thing last week. Intent. This, someone gives you a briefcase with something you think is loads of money and you illegally smuggle it into a country, you get there, and it's not even money. Or, similarly, similarly with drugs, you can try no, and smuggle can't. drugs you can't, in. You can't be but convicted. It's sugar. You can't. You try and smuggle drugs in, which is sugar, but, yeah, it turns out it's actually sugar. Can you still be convicted? Could no. Attempted to... Wait, are we talking can you or should you? Uh, in your European law, can you? Can you? Like, yes, no. I guess. Mm, no. I would guess. Okay, so let me let me. Is... Can I give a reason as to why? I would say yes. Okay. So yeah. I would guess yes because the if you look at it from the perspective of the law, this person is now a risk of someone doing that because just because they failed once, they clearly have intent to do it. Mm. So that would be my thought. That's a good point. Like attempted murder is obviously a, uh, a thing. Yeah, yeah. failed. Because I did think of intent, but then I was like, but they didn't actually do, they didn't actually commit a crime. But then attempted murder, to be honest, they've probably still maybe injured the person in some way. Maybe. <laughs> unless it completely <laughs> went wrong. Trying to shoot someone and miss them. <laughs> well, lots no. Of ways to attempt. The teenager shot his parents in their head, but they both survived. Yeah, but, no, okay, but that's one very <laughs> circumstantial case. What about if you try to shoot at someone and you miss them? Should you go to prison for that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The answer is yes. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> Walk us past the goalpost there, Maxi. Thanks. <laughs> okay, so um, what, what, what's the answer? Uh, so the answer is uh, yes, you can. There's uh, If you show intent of doing something illegal, oh, then you wow. can be tried for it. Okay, then what about this question? I think I know the answer to this. What about if you thought you were bringing in a lot of paper, but it turns out you smuggled a load of money? Yes. Because I no. say you, you're being silly. You've no. been so silly. Can, can you be tried? Yes. If if tried means what I think it means, I'm not sure it does. <laughs> they would have to prove. Like, can you be convicted of, of a crime? They would can have you to be prove of money beyond reasonable doubt that they did not know that it was money. Yeah, the, yeah. the burden of proof the, is on the them. The intent isn't it? wasn't there. The intent wasn't there. The intent was just to bring paper in. But that's what Why Emma's saying. The burden of proof money? is on the person. Then to s at least we think the burden of proof is on the person to to prove that they had no intent to bring in money that they intended to bring in paper. Because how do you prove yeah. that? Unless it, was, like if you, unless it was planted on them, that's different. But if they brought it in thinking, ooh, I'm going to take this but, but then, okay, but then Don't, don't wait, go wait, into wait. this one too much. So I'm not so confident about the answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, but then like, if you bring in sugar in, like you were saying the drugs came in and then they opened it up and it was sugar, you go, I intended to bring sugar in. How proved that I didn't and my intention wasn't to bring sugar in. I think mm. typically someone bringing in a suitcase of sugar is already a bit suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <It's> like... <laughs> but but that's 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 neither here or there. My intention was to bring sugar in. I have yeah. But prove otherwise. Yeah. But uh, no we yeah, so it's it will be then if they could track back that like in text or anything else they're like this looks like they thought they bought drugs in let's look at their phones and it says like i'm bringing heroin um for you oh so they've got to buy the money but it has then to be blatant like, it was intent it has to be blatant but no, like... you, have, you have to prove there was intent in yeah. that case oh okay and i don't think just seeing the sugar on its own is enough yeah okay then i've got one more example kind of thing um and then i'm going to go through the little story that 
I thought was funny. Okay. Um, so the last one is someone's, st- you have a bike, right? Someone steals it. The next day, you see what you think is your bike, but you're not sure. You take the bike, and it is your bike. So you steal the bike back, and it is your bike. Can you be convicted of stealing then? Ooh. No. But I know a lot of information because you said it was my bike. Yeah. But yeah, I'm gonna yeah. go with I'm gonna go with no. You think it's your bike. You're not sure if it's your bike, but you think it's your bike. Yeah, at what point do you find out? At what point do you I find think... out it's your bike? Yeah, if at what you, point? If when you the... go through the whole stealing process, how do you not know, yeah, no, so, but so then you, verify it later? You have your bike stolen. You have your bike stolen, right? And then two days later, you you walking down the street and you see your bike. You're like, I'm pretty sure that's my bike. Yeah. You're not 100% sure, but you're pretty sure that's my bike. You steal that bike back. So now you own it. Right. Yeah. And then, I don't know. That person then reports that you've stolen their bike. They bought it from somebody else, and they check it out, and it turns out it was all it was your bike in the first place. Like the police come in, investigate, check it out. It was your bike in the first place. Can you now be convicted of stealing your bike back? I think you could potentially. In Norwegian, in this is in Norwegian law. Is it European law? I don't know. This is Norwegian law, so it might be different where you're from. But in Norwegian law, very specific question. I would guess that you could be convicted potentially. Like I'm trying to think bike, like if it was a car, for example. But that's a lot of that's obvious to know if it's your car or not. But a bike, I think you potentially be convicted because you've stolen some, like you've taken it from someone else without knowing that it was yours. Like you've taken the law into your own hands. You're a vigilante. I don't know about Norwegian law, but I know about the streets, right? (laughs) You know about the streets, (laughs) the laws on the streets, and that's my bike. Come and take it off me. <laughs> it's like using using yeah. the the the. I don't know. I was going to say using the murder, but I guess it doesn't work out. But like, it's being a vigilante. Like you've taken the law into your just because someone stole it from you doesn't mean you can steal it back. If that makes sense. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I get, think I'm just you're trying right. To make I think up. you can be convicted. Yeah. <laughs> this is sucks. But interestingly, the law bloody sucks. I'm going to look at Melody for confirmation. But interestingly, you can be convicted for stealing, right? But if you go through the whole procedure lawfully, then your bike will be returned to you. Because if you go to the police and you say, that person might have bought the bike from somebody, but the person that sold it to him never owned the bike. So when it goes to the courts, eventually you're going to get your bike back. They say, well, you own the bike, so it had no right to be sold around the line. And the person that sold that yeah. bike to the next person was actually stealing that person's money, essentially, because he didn't sell him anything. He had nothing yeah. to sell. Him. So if you go through the correct procedures, you'll get your bike back. But if you try to steal the bike yourself, you're you can be convicted of stealing. Wow. Unless unless you're a hundred percent sure it's your bike. If you're a hundred percent sure it's your bike and there's a code on it to prove it's yours, then it's not stealing. But if you're like that looks like my bike, then uh you can get convicted for stealing, even if it is yours. Can you instead of um stealing the, the bike, can you take it you go, I'm taking this for evidence to take, the police take station. Take the wheels off. I'm so taking you... it to the police station. No, you can't do that. No? <laughs> Oh. Come with me. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Yeah, laws are a bit crazy. But yeah, anyway, there, there, there were lots of little examples, but now I'm going to talk to you about a classic Nigerian scam. Go. Which um, happened in Norway. This is a true story. Okay. It happened in 2000. And, well, the, the it was tried in 2004 in Norway, right? Go. Yeah. And it happened in 2000. So basically, there was some Nigerian... Um, there was a Nigerian citizen that contacted a Norwegian company and he basically explained to them, he said, I'm contacting your company because I have 17 million US dollars. So straight away, you're like, oh, good one. But for some reason, they went further than this. So there's 17 million US dollars that I, this person in Nigeria has and it come from their deceased husband who made some dodgy deal with the Russians and now the Nigerian authorities are trying to like check it out. So they need to move the money somewhere, right? So we need to transfer the money. We need to get it out of Nigeria and they want to move it to Norway. Um, and in return, this Norwegian company can get 25% of that money back. So they can get <laughs> 4 million US dollars if they let them move the money to them, like to, to Norway. And then the, the guy who like was, <laughs> yeah, the guy that was being contacted was like, okay, uh, let me check this out. So he went to a lawyer, like a very like renowned lawyer and said, hey, um, 
I got this email. What do you think? He's like, that's bullshit. Like, ignore it. But then he spoke to some other people and then some business partners in Dubai or something thought it was legit. So he was like, okay, I, I prefer that answer. So I'm going to go with this is a legit <laughs> thing, right? So then then he goes along with it. He's like, okay, let's now talk to them. Um, and then it's they, they go back and forth a bit and it turns out that he's like, okay, well, for some reason, I'm not sure about this one, he needs to get the money to Germany first, right? So then he contacts the friend in Germany to say, okay, like, can you set up a bank account? And we're going to bring this money in, like cash, and then we're going to put it into your bank account. And then we're going to move from your bank account into our bank account. And for you, we'll give you $40,000 $40, or something. You know, that you can have a load of money too. So that, now they're just chucking money out left, right, and center and dragging people into this <laughs> big scam, right? <laughs> they eventually meet these people in Germany, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then the people who got, they have $17 million on them, right? They're saying we need $5,000. Five hundred dollars expenses because we have to get here, right? So yeah. the guy hand that like, gives them five thousand five hundred dollars expenses. They can't use it from the cash in their suitcase because this is the key thing. All the cash in the suitcase is stained in this black tar, which can only be removed by a specific chemical, which costs seventy thousand US dollars to to produce. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Yeah. <laughs> That makes sense. Yeah, 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 it makes sense so far. I'm in. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna so, give this so they have to pay. This is just a Nigerian to, just to authorities. Able... Okay, so first, what happens? Melody is confirmed with me here. So what happens is they get the. They, it's like a magic trick, basically. They get the some of the money in the suitcase and they they put it in this acid, and then it turns back into real money. It looks like hundred dollar bills. Yeah. Like, oh, like this looks legit. And then they do it to a lot, a lot of them, and they're like, it seems random enough. I'm assuming all of this is real money, and in that suitcase. Yeah. Oh, and then after that as well, they go to the bank with that money <laughs> and they cash it in. Oh, okay. Right? They go to the bank with the money, they cash it in. They're like, this is real $100 bills. So I'm assuming all this money is real $100 bills. So now I'm, I'm really sold on this idea. Like this is definitely money. Yeah. So in order for them to be able to access this money, they have to pay $70,000 to these Nigerians for them to develop the acid and then give them the acid so that they can access their money. So they first they transferred them $5,500 for them to get to Europe and back and hotels. <laughs> And then they um, pay them another seventy thousand dollars to get access to the acid. And they say to the Nigerians, "Then can we have the money?" Then they say, "Well, we haven't got all the money at the moment. This is just some of it. The rest of it is in our safe house in a Nigerian embassy in Germany somewhere." And they're like, "What? Okay." And then they contact like some Germany German authorities or the people in Germany like check it out. And this building doesn't exist. Scam. Yeah. Oh. Right. Yeah, you can sort of imagine the rest of the story. So they, they, the Nigerians basically give them this fake money, flee, never give them any more money. They say, "Oh, we delivered the money, didn't you get it?" And they're like, "No, you didn't get it." And now they try and get lawyers on their asses and whatever else, but they have no money. Like th this isn't real money. They just gave these people about eighty thousand US dollars for no reason. And then the question, which is why this story is relevant to everything else, is when they go to Norwegian court, <laughs> should they get in trouble for trying to launder money into the country? when they've actually just been scammed themselves. So they just lost a load of money and now they're about oh. to get tried and they're always in court themselves. Oh. oh. So it wasn't trying to get the prove the Nigerians wrong. It's like you're trying to scam money. Oh, so they're going to get smacked twice. Yeah. So they've lost money and then they could get into <laughs> serious trouble for trying to launder money. Man. Is that essentially? And are you asking yeah. whether they did get caught? I mean, get thingied. Oh, I'm yeah, like I, I just like guess yeah. I guess I'm That's asking that. Crazy. I am super impressed by that guy, the Norwegian bloke, right? Because I was getting confused in the story. So how they kept up with the Nigerians' demands was incredible. Like, like because pay me he five thousand to come to Europe. The, hook, and, line, and sinker. Yeah. He was in. He yeah. was like millions of dollars. Okay, I mean, but you get those letters, don't you? Yeah, uh, well, I've like, had heaps of like random stuff or calls saying, um, calling from the the tax office and uh, it's like a recorded message and you're going to go to jail if you don't, whatever. Yeah. And like, <gasps> hang up now. But um, it's it is sad because so many people do get scammed. Like yeah. so many people still, yeah. like still, yeah, still. And we all know about scams and everything like that, but. They make it yeah, look they evolve, so, don't they? Scams so evolve. legitimate. Yeah, this was back in 2000. So I guess then because yeah, the internet was so still relatively 
new. It might have been easy to fall new. for. But this guy took out loads of personal loans to like try and get this chemical and sent a lot more money as well afterwards. And then so he was like he was nearly bankrupting himself to try and get hold of this 17 million US dollars, which was going to change his life. And then he went to court and then he got put in jail for three years. Oh, so that was the end and of the story. His wife. his wife divorced him as well. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. So he got fired from his company. His wife divorced him. He went to jail for three years and he just spent about over 100 grand US dollars. Wow. I mean, because of an email. That wow. sounds about right, though. Yeah. Oh. Three years in jail. Okay. Well, I just, I just mean in terms of like yeah, that, the fact that you guys are shocked about that surprises me because the guy tried to launder money like that. Okay. <laughs> like he should no, get penalised for that. No, but did he know it was laundering money? Because didn't he say yes. the Nigerian um, person said he was from the Nigerian authorities? Like no, no, he said no. he got the money off the Russians. Like he knew it was, was bad money. He didn't did say he... necessarily if it was good or bad money. He just said they got money from Russians, but the Nigerian authorities are checking it out and they don't want them to find the money. So that implies it's bad money. Yeah, that. Oh. I mean, and then yeah. yeah, and then the way the transaction as well is a reasonable person is going to believe that is not a normal way to do the transaction. So it's is they're very they're pretty sh- they know what they're doing kind of thing, and yeah. the courts obviously found that. Yeah, like. Uh, Put it in this perspective. If Dev did all of that, Emma, do you think you'd stay with him? No. <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> no, I get it. But like, yeah, that's uh You kind of feel sorry for him in a strange way. Okay. At what point Why? of the at what point of the scam <laughs> would you would you stop? The beginning. At the beginning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the first. I nearly got scammed. You you did. Well, we were selling our sofa. And uh, our sofa from when, when we were moving yeah, yeah, out. Yeah. And then I got a, this was on Gumtree. And, oh, then, and then you rang me up. And then someone said, oh, I'd love, yeah, I want to see your sofa. Or oh, I'll buy your sofa. And I think they offered more than what I was selling it yeah, for. That's right. And, but they said. <laughs> um, as as you normally do when people sell stuff. No, but they said you have to <laughs> transfer. Bid with themselves. <laughs> Say? They oh. said, "Give me the transport money." That's yeah, what they tr- said. Trans, because they were overseas. They were overseas or something. And I was like, "That's really bizarre." And in Australia as well. I yeah. was at I was at work. I was at work. I remember this. And you I wasn't said, ever going to do it because I was like, yeah, "That's a." But you ra- you dodge, rang me. Man. You rang me and you said, "Um, they want me to transfer one hundred twenty five dollars so they can see the 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 sofa." And I was like, "No." <laughs> yeah, and then some. No, but then something else after that, and they were calling from either South Africa or Nigeria. I can't remember where it was, and I was like, like I, I don't know, put in their number or whatever, and it was like scam, 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 and I was like, yeah, man, you guys are dodgy. Mm-hmm.